I'm not American, but you know what? I love me some soccer games. I know the most of the world calls the sport football, but here's the thing, I don't actually watch football. I don't know any of the players, I know maybe a few of the countries, but for whatever reason, soccer video games are really my jam. I really love it. And so in this video I thought I would just showcase some of my favorite soccer games. And by the way, if you can't tell already, this video is unscripted, so it might be a bit more ramblier than usual. Anyway, we're gonna go in chronological order here, so let's start with Nintendo World Cup. You might remember this from my video about bad video game box art, because really, Nintendo World Cup's box art doesn't really do it justice. If you look at the graphics, you will instantly recognize that this game may have some connection with a little game called River City Ransom. I've never played it, but the same company Technos made this, so even though it has Nintendo in the title, Nintendo didn't actually make this. So this game came out in the late 80s, and what's amazing about it is the fact that it is actually a very legit soccer game. I mean, it's a smidge more violent and cartoony than your normal soccer games, but essentially, the game functions more or less like a real soccer game. The number one thing that you will probably notice about it, though, is that you can only control one of the team's members. The fourth member, for some bizarre reason. But before you start the game, you actually get to pick your strategy. You even get to change it in the halftime. And you also give orders to the players to either pass or shoot at the goal. You don't get a full team of players, obviously, but you actually get quite a few, which is also impressive. Although they strategically only have a small number of players on the screen at the same time, probably so that the object limit wouldn't be hit. My favorite part about this game, though, is how unabashedly you can just tackle everybody. In fact, if you tackle them enough, eventually they'll stop getting back up. No yellow cards, no red cards, no penalties. Also, if you hit A and B together at the correct time, you can even do a kind of a super kick, which is basically an instant goal for you. Yeah, I gotta say, I'm really impressed by this. For a soccer game on an 8-bit system, this is surprisingly complex and a lot of fun to play. Even though there technically is only one game mode, then it has probably the easiest password to crack in the world. The only thing that I maybe have a slight problem with is the fact that all the teams are practically identical, with only a different color scheme. But there is some pretty nice music at the very least. This is definitely a fun game to just pop in. Then there's World Cup Italia 90. Man, the title just rolls off your tongue, doesn't it? Now this was originally an arcade game that was later ported over to the Mega Drive, or the Genesis. But most people will tell you that this is a very Sega-fied port. That is to say, it kinda sucks. Don't get me wrong, I do think it's a fun soccer game. It definitely has a smidge more realism than w Nintendo World Cup. I'm not a fan of this view angle. It feels like I'm playing GTA 1. It does have background music, but there are only three background themes. And it seems like most of the countries just have the same theme, which is kind of weird. Also, trying to pass along the ground seems like a completely pointless thing to do because your ball is always going to bounce off the opposite team's players. Basically, your strategy in this game mostly amounts to you bouncing the ball up in the air and then shooting it when you're very near the goal. I don't know, this game feels extremely clunky to me, especially compared to Nintendo World Cup. There just does not seem to be a lot of strategy to it, and you can't even change formations, which would really help. There are some nice graphics when you get a goal, or sometimes when you get a penalty or a goal kick, but that is pretty much it. This game honestly isn't as much fun as I really hoped it would be. But it does have one thing in common with Nintendo World Cup, that's the complete impunity at which you can just keep leg sweeping your opposing team's players. Seriously, there are no yellow or red cards in this one either. It feels a little bit more legit thanks to the World Cup license, but it just doesn't feel very rewarding. Alright, and next let's look at a really obscure soccer game, Striker Pro for the CDI. Yes, the frickin' CDI had a soccer game. In fact, it had two, but unfortunately Ultra CDI Soccer requires the digital video cartridge, which I do not have. The fact that there is a soccer game on the CDI just blows my mind, because in case you didn't know, the CDI wasn't really designed to be a game system of any serious description. And yes, you can definitely tell that the game has some obvious performance issues, but I'm shocked that this game actually runs way more smoothly than I thought. 
and the player AI is actually really good. Your teammates seem to be on the ball most of the time. Now the most disappointing thing about the gameplay in my view is the fact that you only use one button. You're supposed to hold the button down for longer shots, but really, it doesn't seem to matter that much. And look, these single button soccer games are nothing new. They've been around on home computers since the 80s. That said, the gameplay actually is really good, and there are a lot of options which really surprises me. And, unlike World Cup Italia 90, you can actually change formations. Although, Striker Pro also included a feature that I'm not a huge fan of, which is the fact that you literally have to wait for all of the players to be in positions before play continues. Yes, it's actually even more realistic than World Cup Italia 90. So, in quick spurs, this actually is a pretty fun game. Although, because it's the CDI, you probably already guessed that there are some shortcomings. And one that Striker Pro has is very common to most CDI games, which is the fact that the audio real estate is a bit sparse. For one thing, there's no in-game music at all. The only music you hear is in the title screen. There are sound effects, the crowd actually sounds very good, but when the crowd dies down, all you hear is the kicking sound effect. Also, there is an option to play with fewer players, which helps with the lag issue, but come on, you want to play with a full team, don't you? And here's the real sucky part. You see all these different game modes? Well, unless you have a second player, guess what? You can't play any of these. Yes, a single friendly match is the only game mode that is available for single player. That is astonishing. I mean, yes, this game came with a big sticker on the jewel case that said two-player game. Well, that wasn't them just boasting about the fact that there was actually a multiplayer game on the CDI. This game literally is meant for only two players. And I can't understand why. The, the computer opponent AI is actually pretty good. Granted, it is a bit slick, but there's enough graphic variety here that they could have made this work really well. I'm genuinely curious how Ultra CDI is different, but unfortunately, like I said, I don't have the necessary part to make it run. In fact, my 4050 CDI doesn't even have a second controller port, which means that I would have to buy the CDI controller splitter cable, and yes, that's a real thing. But even as a simple novelty, I would still pick this one over World Cup Italia 90. But World Cup Italia 90 at least does have a World Cup mode. So, so I'm a bit embarrassed to admit this, but Nintendo World Cup is still kicking both of these games' asses. Alright, finally, let's move on to the PCs, the world of 3D, and this is Actua Soccer. Ignore the logo in the top left there. This is the GOG version, and for some reason they decided to release this game under the American title, which is... VR Soccer, which is bullshit. Everybody knows this is Actua Soccer from Gremlin Software. Actua Soccer wasn't the first 3D soccer game. I think Sega beat them to the punch up by about a year. But Actua Soccer was the first 3D soccer game for home computers, and that alone makes it very interesting. All the more so because it's actually aged surprisingly well. This is a fun game to still just pick up and play. I'm most impressed with all the different camera moves, and you might have noticed that the camera angle isn't your conventional sight profile that you usually see in these types of games. Well, in fact, there is a reason for it. The wire camera, which just kind of follows the ball around, is really the only playable game angle if you're using the keyboard. Because when you're using the keyboard, you only have eight directions to work with. But this game is very easy to synchronize with, let's say, an Xbox 360 controller and play it that way. I love the announcers, they're just so crazy. The pitch also seems to change a little bit from game to game, although I haven't been able to figure out what triggers this. And my only main issue is that World Cup mode in this game really kind of sucks. There's no pomp or circumstance into it. It's basically no different than playing a set of friendly matches. So this is a game that is best enjoyed on a single match-by-match -match basis, really. But I goddamn love this game. That menu music is my fucking jam. I also happen to have Actua Soccer Club Edition for PlayStation 1, but unfortunately my PlayStation 2 has decided to give up on life and so you're not going to see any game footage from it. It's basically the same game. The main thing that's better about it is the fact that the menus are a lot more manageable. I mean, look at this shit. In order to change formations in the PC version, you have to use the fucking function buttons. That really sucks. But unfortunately, as a trade-off, the PlayStation version was unfortunately released before the dual analog which means that you can only use the D-pad. 
which is really no different from using the arrow keys on a keyboard, which means using the wire camera is really recommended for the PlayStation version. And of course, because it's the club edition, it, that means it has all the British football clubs represented in it. If that's important to you, I guess that's kind of cool. But like I said, I don't watch real football, so that doesn't really matter to me. Then we have International Superstar Soccer 64. I feel I don't really need to say a whole lot about this, because people already know that this is not just my favorite soccer game, but actually one of my favorite Nintendo 64 games as well. I have probably put way more hours into this thing than any other sports game ever. I think ISS really hits that right sweet spot where it's just realistic enough to be challenging and tactical and give you options in order to fight your way in different matches. But it's also simple enough that you can kind of just jump into it and learn your way through it. And it has my favorite World Cup mode, obviously, with the ending cutscenes being particularly memorable. But yeah, really don't need to add a whole lot to this. This is just a genuinely fun game that has aged surprisingly well. All right, and I really wanted to end this on having one of those modern EA titles here. In fact, I do own FIFA 2004. Unfortunately, it does not run on my PC anymore. And I'm recording this on the wake of the coronavirus, so forgive me for not running to the local used game store to pick up a copy of FIFA whatever happens to be out there. So instead, you're going to see me play Sensible Soccer 2006. Now this was basically an attempt by Sensible Software to bring back their old Sensible Soccer series, which was a big deal on home computers in the early 90s. Sensible World of Soccer it probably has one of the best intro cutscenes of all time. The game itself... Yeah, not a fan of it. It's actually less of a real football game and more of a football management title. Uh, if you're into that shit, sure. But not really my cup of tea. Sensible 2006, however, is a more legit soccer game. And as you can see from the big heads, this one's trying to be a bit quirkier and cartoony. But it still recognizes its traditions with a smooth jazz version of the original Sensible Soccer theme song, Goal Scoring Superstar Hero. And even though this game is a bit cartoony, it does display some of the things that I really hate about modern sports games. Namely that every fucking event in this game has a replay. Seriously, sure this is a real thing in real sports as well, but do we really need to have replays of absolutely fucking everything? If you're gonna give me a penalty, just give me the fucking penalty and let's keep the game moving. Hell, there's even a replay button which I managed to occasionally press by accident. Yeah, the big difference between this and EA sports titles is really just the fact that the game is not getting drowned out by a bunch of shitty licensed music. But I would still say Sensible Soccer 2006 is pretty fun, even though it did fail to rejuvenate the Sensible Soccer series. Series. So, those were my soccer games. Maybe it's the lush green of the pitch, the fair nature of the game, or the chivalry of the soccer players. There's just something kind of magical about soccer video games, and I always have a good time with them. I've been Hunter the Hunter Mackinnon. So long, and remember to play fair.